CT Evangelist, and I'm going to talk a little bit about all and wonder in the classroom because it's an amazing way to inspire our young people. A bit of mystery, a bit of awe and wonder, getting our students to think about the way in which they want to work and learn in their classroom. Someone far greater than me, a gentleman Tom Sherrington, wrote a series of posts on his blog about great lessons, and on one of them he talks about awe and wonder, and he says that we've got this sort of moral duty as teachers to inspire and engage and enthuse our young people. It's something that I try and do in my classroom, and so what I'm going to try and do in my remaining few minutes, although my time seems to have gone. Oh, okay, four minutes, I'm doing all right. Then I'll be a barrier. <laughs> right, okay, so um, I'm really lucky. Uh, I get to work um, in both primary and secondary schools a little bit now, because um, my boys are in primary school and I help out at their school, and I work in my uh, secondary school uh, just outside Bristol, and I'm lucky to work with some other schools as well. And what we try and do is use Awe and Wonder to help us engage, uh, develop our young people, enthuse them, uh, and inspire them with what they do. So, um, how do we do that? Well, we can do it with objects of awe and wonder. So, for example, in my boys' school, um, when I'm introduced in computing, I use a little thing here called an Ozobot. Okay, students can draw with a pen, okay, uh, using different colours, and that can then um, program this little robot to move around and zoom around on the page. And you can get to solve different problems uh, using their pens and drawing different mazes, and so forth and so on. Something else I use, um, introducing computing in Key Stage 3, um, is a thing I've got in my ball, in my pocket here called a Sphero Ball. And you can use it for lots of different things, or what have you. Uh, I've heard of, um, uh, Rachel was talking recently about using it as a questioning device, getting it to roll around a room and students chasing it to pick up and answer questions. You can control this with your Android or your um, uh, iOS device, and that's absolutely brilliant a really engaging way of getting students to work in the classroom. What I did with my computing students was I got them to go around my little assault course I'd made and got them to do the best time that they could. They went around and did it a few times, they got quicker and quicker and quicker. And then I said, well, can I have a go? And I don't know, all right then, sir. I had a go. And I used the app where I could actually program the board to go around really quickly. Well, I stripped them down. You know, my time was so, so quick compared to theirs. Now, when they saw me doing mine, they were like, whoa, how did you do that? I showed them how they were really hooked straight away, really engaged into learning how to program with their computer. We can get students to be um, engaged as well, and we bring a bit more in wonder uh, with our encouragement and praise of their work as well. Because if you think about Austin's Butterfly, where that, gentleman, that, that young lad uh, working with um, Ron Berger um, refined and proved, refined and proved, refined and proved his butterfly that he drew, so it was absolutely brilliant at the end of his making. If we celebrate and uh, encourage and praise our young people, then we can really, really, really um, get them to feel a bit of awe and wonder about the way that they work. Now, thanks to my glamorous technical assistant over here. Something else I use, um, not just in my classroom, but in the classrooms of other teachers in my school, uh, is a thing called augmented reality. Now, this first app, um, Oh, my boys. Um, the first app we can see is one called Spacecraft 3D. So what we have got is just a piece of paper which acts as a marker. When you hover the iPad or your Android device um, over the top of the marker, you then get a three-dimensional um, spacecraft that you can examine and you can use that for lots of things in science, but in also in other lessons too. Next one, please. If you want to learn about the human body as well, another one called 4D Anatomy, enables you to zoom in, take away, remove from parts of the heart, uh, all the human body. This is harder than presenting. <laughs> uh, zoom in a bit, just go a bit closer. Okay, and, and that's completely three-dimensional. You can add skin tone and, and take it away. Now students before could only do that learning through actually going to a morgue. Imagine the risk assessment on that. Okay, but this way you're doing fantastic learning. Now, something that we're using in primary, in my, in my son's primary school, um, to engage in their creative writing, is this one. And this one's called Collar. Now, I particularly like this one, okay, not only because it's fun and it sings a little song to you and all the rest of it, but you get a sheet and you can colour it in. 
And what's amazing is the application picks up the colours that you've coded on the page, okay? And so um, it, it transforms those colours onto the actual design that you see. Okay, I, I left the coloured in one, sorry, in the car. Okay, so uh, but that's what you see there. It should be coloured in really. So that leads me to say to you, thank you very much for having me, and uh, a very merry Christmas. Thank you.